Welcome to EndNote Essentials for version 20. By way of background, I'll just introduce EndNote while answering the question, what is an EndNote? So EndNote is your referencing and referencing styles manager. It doesn't do everything automatically for you. You'd still need to be able to know how to reference in the style that you're asked to use that you need to use for, for whatever project you're on. But what it does do is it gives you a, a workflow manager for everything to do with referencing all the steps or all the aspects of referencing that you might want to use references for. So it's software that allows you in the first place to organize all the things together in one place rather than have them disparate in very many places and to store them in one place to organize them for different purposes, for different uses, for different projects. It allows you to import uh, records and information from various search tools and library databases. That's one place where it saves you a lot of time into EndNote for use and for use with Word documents for entering in-text citations and bibliography entries in the style that you want to be using at that time. Now, we're using the desktop program today. There's also an, uh, an online version. We won't be covering that today. That's for another session. And for the desktop program that we're using today, the way it works is that it creates files with records, little databases, and applications on those databases called EndNote libraries. And in it, you can store all the information for the references, but you can also store files with those references, associate PDFs and store PDFs with those references. So as you go along in your research pathway, you'll be able to build up your own personal database of academic and professional literature. This is what we're covering today. So we're using the exercises and activities as the resource for working from. It has steps that I'll be demonstrating at the start, as well as exercises that you'll be asked to do after that, as well as extra activities to do later on to build on what you've learned today. So I'll start with an introductory demonstration just to show you what the interface looks like, what the basic functionalities are, where they are, just to get you used to it, to familiarize you to the interface, but also to give you an idea of what you're gonna be aiming for yourself in the exercises that we're gonna ask you to do next and after that. So in part B, it'll be your turn to create your own library, your own little database, and then firstly, to create uh, references manually, and then to export references from a database, an example search tool into your library. We'll also have a look in one of the exercises you'll be doing to see how successful extracting full text files will be into your EndNote library. We'll have a look at grouping references for particular purposes, and we'll have a look at how to the PDF viewer works with EndNote. In part C, we'll have a look at EndNote working with Word. So the key application of inserting in-text citations and bibliography entries into Word documents in the styles, and also how to edit those citations and edit those citations safely, a little bit on document management in general, and then lastly, how to back up your library. So that's what we'll be doing today. And I'll get started straight away with part A, the introductory demo. When you've got EndNote installed on your machine, wherever you are, you can go to the start menu button to find under the programs, the EndNote program and click on it to open it. And this screen will come up first off. So that it's a little screen that asks you to either choose to open an existing library or to open a new library. Now for this demonstration, I'll open an existing library just to show you. And everyone's got this existing library themselves as well. So you, you might have a look at it later on as well. The existing library is in C, in program files, and in EndNote, in an examples folder. And this is what the example library looks like. So it's an already populated, already created, already organized library. 
and I'll just show you or tell you what the divisions are there. At the top, you've got the command bar, the top left, with various functionalities underneath those menus. And then below that, you've got four different panes. On the far left, there's the groups pane. Now the groups pane is the way that you would look at your records for references according to the groups that you've got or the subviews that you want to create or have created already. So the categories, the subjects in some cases. Right at the top, there's the all references group. And then below that in this example library, there's groups that have been created according to different themes, different projects, different purposes. So the idea is that you as the user collect references and then organize them into subgroups so that you can use them for different purposes. In this case, there is the one called avian intelligence, which is about a thesis then perhaps. There's, there's a group about a chapter. There's a group about a research themes. These are all custom groups. And so the idea is that you only really need one library with subgroups, which really acts as sub libraries for your different projects, chapters, work, home, and your research projects and groups that you'll be working with. And this is one of the things that you'll be doing in one of the exercises as well. So creating one of these groups will be one of the exercises. Then in the middle, you've got the list view. I suppose this is the view that you'll be looking at most of the time. It's a, a logical list of uh, information for references organized in column headings in commonly understood descriptors for so resources. So there's a column for author, there's a column for year of publication, there's a column for the title of the article or a book, the type of resource it is, and so forth. And it's possible to customize this according to your own needs, depending on what you want to see in that view. So for example, if, if you hover with your mouse overneath the column heading and right click, it's possible to select or deselect from a large group of potential column headings. You could put one in for rating. If you thought that it was important for you to uh, rate your own resources, or you could take that out again. As well as this list view itself, there's the icons at the top right above the list view I want to draw your attention to now. There's these ones over here. Because this is where you'll be clicking in a while too when you do your exercises. The first one here, for example, add a new reference is one thing that you'll be doing in one of the exercises. And the other one here, search the web for full text, is another icon that you'll be using for one of the exercises. Then to the right, there's the individual view pane. Something becomes visible there when you select it from the list view. So for example, if I click on one of the items in the list view, say Arnett, information about that becomes visible in the individual view pane. At the top half, there is a, a summary, view, summary view, which includes things like the title, the authors, and if it's there, an abstract. And below, there's a, a summary preview. The summary preview shows you the information from the record as it would be displayed in your Word document. So as a reference in your Word document, it gives you a preview to check whether everything's okay. It gives you that preview in the style that you have selected at that particular time. So just above that preview, there's a small drop down window, which if you click on it, gives you, first of all, a preview of the, the most used referencing styles at QUT, so APA and Vancouver, IEEE and AGLC. And it's possible to change that preview based on that. But of course, you may be in a situation where you don't just want to use those styles. You may be working with someone else from another university, or you may be wanting to publish an article in a particular journal. And so EndNote comes with a lot of different styles beyond just these basic four. And to be able to activate or find that, you would select another style from that drop-down menu. And that then brings up 
a larger list of potential styles that you can pick from. So for example, you might be working with someone from UQ on a humanities one and you're using the MLA style. You could search for it and double click to select it. And from that moment on, it will become visible and available in your preview section to select from. So that's the preview. As I was saying before, you want to have that preview to be able to check whether the reference that you've got is going to reflect correctly in your Word document. Because it is the case that the quality of the reference depends on how you type in the data or what data is exported from different search tools and databases. It's not always comprehensive. It's not always correct. The formatting is sometimes off. So you need to check against your knowledge of the style and this is where you still need to know how to reference and if there is any errors in that preview you would need to correct it. The place to correct it would be in the edit window in this individual view. So there's the preview here and then right at the top on the left next to summary there's the edit function there and that gives you access to the full record with all potential fields that you might need to uh, enter data into depending on what reference type you've got selected. So right at the top, there's the drop down menu with the reference type for different references types such as chapter, book, government document. And below that, the fields would to populate data into or to correct data. So sometimes you might take some details out. Sometimes you might need to take, put some details in. And sometimes you might need to change some of the formatting. And when you do have it finished and edited, you can click on save and exit. One more thing before we go to the next pane is in the summary pane, you've also got besides the uh, title and abstract, two tabs at the top. One of them is attach file, and this is how you would manually attach a, an extra file such as a PDF for, uh, for the article. And the other one is the, uh, the, the file itself, if it, if it happens to be already attached. That's actually displaying as a drop down menu, and the drop down menu allows you to either open it in the native PDF viewer of EndNote, or it allows you to open it in the default. PDF viewer that you have on the computer at that time. So it's up to you which ones to pick. There'll be an exercise for this later on for you as well, where you'll be asked to open a PDF for a PDF that you've downloaded. So that's the three main panes. Then there's also the search pane right at the top of the list view here. It's possible to use the simple view or the advanced view, and you can make your searches as complex or as simple as you like. It's like an advanced data based search. And it's possible to search in any of the fields that are available in any of the records. It's possible to search in the PDFs as well. And also in any notes that you may have attached in the PDFs when you've edited the PDF. So there's quite a lot of complexity there. I'll just show you by way of example what it, what it will work like. So say for example, using the word evolutionary, searched in title, searched in all references rather than in the subgroup perhaps, would bring one result. So that's the demonstration. So next, it's your turn. <laughs> 